Meanwhile, there is a showdown over infrastructure underway in Washington. Senate Democrats moving forward today with a key procedural vote on the $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill. Despite not finishing actually writing it, Republican leadership signaling they will not sign off on the bill until they see what's actually in it and how this uh, will be paid for. Democrats will need the support of at least 10 Republicans to reach the key 60-vote threshold to move the bill forward. Joining me right now is Oklahoma Senator, member of the Senate Homeland and Governmental Affairs Committee's James Lankford. Senator, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks very much for so being here this morning. Uh, tell us what takes place today. Will they have the 10 Republicans supporting this bill to move it forward? They will not have Republican support on this, nor should they have any support on this. This is a whole new low. Uh, we go back from uh, 10 years ago where Democrats were saying uh, we need to pass the bill to see what's in it. Now they're talking about trying to pass the bill before they even write it. Uh, literally no one has seen the text. No one, even the people that are in the negotiating team, have not seen final text on it. And they're trying to be able to bring it up for a vote and say, let's move to start debating a text that no one has actually seen. Uh, so the most basic rules of any legislation, you got to be able to read it. You need to be able to know what the score is on it. That is how much it's going to cost from an outside entity to be able to look at it and evaluate it. And then you start moving to debate on it. So no, it's not going to move to debate today, nor should it. So that's pretty extraordinary, actually. They want to debate something that you're not sure what's in it and how to pay for it. So where does this go from here? And what are your thoughts on the three and a half trillion dollar reconciliation plan that your colleagues uh, on the left are preparing as well? I understand they want to throw an amnesty component in there. Maybe they want to throw some voting legislation in there, throw in the whole kitchen sink to try to get it through reconciliation. So this is three and a half trillion dollars. It is a massive tax and spending spree. It is a focus from the Democrats to say, what are all the things we ever wanted to do? Let's throw it into one bill. And literally as they're negotiating it and they hear the conversation back and forth, it's about how big of a number can we put out rather than what's actually in it. And now they're trying to fill in all the things that they want to be able to put in it. It's an enormous tax increase or all the things that they're talking about, things like changing stepped up basis, going after corporations. Uh, they could have as much as a five times increase on taxes on companies based on what it was in 2016. So it's a pretty dramatic change on what they're trying to be able to do. And uh, so we're, we're trying to be able to push back and say, number one, stop spending. Uh, this bill that they're proposed right now would take us to $12 trillion they're trying to spend in this year, combined from the COVID spending, the budget they proposed, this infrastructure bill, and then a $3.5 trillion spending spree they're adding on top of it. We've never had a year in American history even close to this level of spending. A tip Typical budget year is around $4 trillion, and they're wanting to spend $12 trillion on this year. Uh, so it is insane the amount wow. of money that they're trying to be able to put out, and we're trying to be able to push back and say, stop the spending. It's the number one question I get at home, which is, where is all this money coming from? And everyone really knows it's all yep. borrowed money. Yeah, and, and not only that, but it may actually be even more than that number because uh, the Committee for a Responsible Budget says that the true cost of this budget plan could exceed $5 trillion. Maya McGinnis says that uh, if, if you schedule certain programs and provisions to expire at arbitrary points over the next decade, you can actually make it look like, you know, fund a program for seven years. It looks cheaper uh, than it actually is under scoring rules. So she says it's not $3.5 trillion, it's actually more more than $5 trillion is the cost of this. Uh, do you think they will be able to get this plan through reconciliation without any Republican yeah. support? They certainly would not have any Republican support on this. This would take every Democrat in the House and the Senate all combining together to say all these liberal wish lists are all our wish lists as well. So, I mean, every single Democrat has to come on board and to say we want to raise taxes to historic levels. We want to do historic amount of debt spending. Uh, we want to be a part of creating all these new entitlements. Uh, there are already started a program now for every child that uh, their parents make $150,000 or less are getting cash payments for every single child uh, coming in the mail now. They want to dramatically increase that. Uh, so this is an enormous shift from where Democrats were in the 90s uh, when they said the era of big government is over and Bill Clinton was talking about ending welfare as we know it and incentivizing work. This is a new Democrat party saying we don't incentivize work. We just want to be able to mail cash to people every single month and maybe they'll vote for us. That's a dramatic shift and if Democrats yeah. are really headed that way, I would tell you the American people will respond very, very hard uh, in the days ahead as they should. 
Well, it certainly is feeling more and more like a welfare state, I've got to tell you. But, Senator, today you are releasing a major report on how the Biden administration has wasted $2 billion, taxpayer dollars, to pay uh, Department of Defense contractors not to build the border wall. Tell us about it. That is correct. So when uh, January the 20th came and Joe Biden came into office, he immediately said he's going to do a 60 day pause to be able to study the wall. At that point, he put all all the contractors along the border area on standby and he paused everything. We're now almost a, a hundred and 25 days since that time period when the study was supposed to be complete. They still haven't finished the study. We're literally paying people three million dollars a day now to watch the materials along the border area, though they're not installing it. They're just watching it. It is up to two billion dollars that has been spent just this calendar year to not build the wall. So instead of actually just finishing construction, which was what the career professionals at DHS and President Trump was so clear about that we need to be able to do, instead of doing that, he's actually paying people to watch the materials, not build the wall, and we have wasted $2 billion that could have been used for our national security. This is absolutely extraordinary. And, you know, they say that COVID is their priority. Meanwhile, the border crisis has turned into a COVID crisis. Uh, 80 percent of the new cases because of that Delta variant. And uh, many people are coming into the country not being tested. And now we know they have COVID. That is correct. And th this is the reason that President Trump put in place a protection to say people cannot just come across the border. We're going to turn people around. It was a logical, reasonable thing to be able to do that. President Biden is now saying he wants to undo the Trump policies. Big surprise. He's undone a lot of these policies yeah. that actually work to be able to protect the border. We're now at a, at a record number every yeah. single month, beating the last month, the number of people crossing the border illegally. So it's got to stop. Oh, it's unbelievable. 188,000 apprehended in the month of June. That's not including the gotaways, as I keep saying. Uh, Senator, bad policy equals bad outcomes. We continue to see that. It's good to see you this morning, and we'll certainly keep a spotlight on well. it. Senator James Lankford joining us in D.C. Thank you, sir.